Hey guys, welcome back. The YouTube channel here for MyGunValues.com. And today we're going to discuss uh, kind of an unusual firearm, not, not really often seen in the U.S., not by any means uncommon, but uh, you don't see a lot of them. And it's, it's uh, built by CZ in Czechoslovakia. It's a Model 52. Now, a little, little background on the 52 is this gun was built for the Czechoslovakian military between 1952 and 1954, hence 1952, the model designation. There was roughly 200,000 produced, and they served for 30 years more or less, and then they were eventually replaced by 9x18 Makarov cartridges or pistols after that time. They were sold, into, as a lot of guns were, they were sold in the U.S. as surplus. And a couple of things on these. There's nowhere on here where they're labeled 52. So you kind of have to know this is what you're looking at in order to understand what they are. They are labeled CZ. You can figure out that they're CZ, and then you start doing a little in detective work, and you can figure out what you have. Originally, they were chambered for the 762 by 25 Tokarev. Full metal jacket bullet. Uh, 308 diameter, 25 millimeter case length. We'll show you. We're open. Does not have a magazine disconnect. You can pull the trigger with the magazine out. Uh, the 762 by 25 back in the time frame these were originally imported in the you know, in the 80s and 90s, this was not a commonly found cartridge in the United States. You could find them, but it, w it was rare. So cottage industry came up, and they started replacing the 762 by 25 Tokarevs with 9mm barrels. Now, we'll set that out there couple of issues that you might notice. The, the case, the, the base and the rim and the extractor groove are all the same. That's pretty much where the similarities end. The Tokarev is a bottleneck cartridge case. It has a higher velocity, but it uses a little bit lighter bullet. The 9mm, of course, is a straight-walled case. 9mm Luger, 9mm Parabellum, whatever you want to call it. These barrels were USA-made to convert these to fire 9mm. That way you didn't have ammunition issues. It's been my finding between these two that the 9mm barrel leaves a little to be desired because, it's, it's, because of its shorter length, it can jam. A little more, now this could be something internal in the gun too, but I've had more problems with the jamming with this gun than I have with this gun. And I haven't switched the barrels and everything out, and there's a reason for that, and I'll share here in a, in a minute when I take these apart, which I normally don't do, but in this case I'm going to take them apart and show them to you. Um, they had the, the fixed sights, which were drift adjustable at the rear. You know, you could move it sideways for lateral. Uh, they were eight round magazines. And you can put the nine millimeter in, obviously, the, the standard Model 52 magazine. There's nothing wrong with this. And for medium ranges, it's not a bad weapon. It just is a little more reliable with what it was designed for, at least when you compare these two side by side. Somebody out there may have a nine millimeter that just shoots lights out and if you do hey that's great but compared to these two you know this one is a little bit better pistol than this one is as, as they're currently configured the other weird thing about this is the takedown and i'm going to see if i can get this right you pull pull down on these little levers 
pull forward and the whole slide assembly just pops right off. A couple of issues with these guns. The rollers, which is this, there's a roller system here on the barrel. These two little rollers and the firing pin aren't made out of real good steel. So you have to, if they start to wear out really prematurely. So you have, there's a company out there, Harrington, I believe, or Harrenman. Um, if, you, if you do a Google search, you'll find them. They make replacement parts for these out of hardened steel, and you don't have the issues that you do with the originals. This one, when it was converted to 9mm, which was before I owned it, uh, this one has already had it done. Come on. This one has not, and I'm, I, it doesn't show up real well, the difference. Does not show up well at all, but this one, and I, I'm not going to take it apart any further than that. Again, there's plenty of videos on the on YouTube of stripping down firearms. I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. I'm just going to cover the history of the gun. It's an interesting weapon. Fairly heavy for a pistol of its size and caliber. That's probably why they were changed out for the, 19, the 1918 Makarovs. There we go. They're not terribly valuable firearms. You know, I wouldn't, if it was me, I don't think I'd pay over uh, for one in really, really, really pristine condition. I wouldn't pay over $500 for one. I don't think it's, I just don't think they're worth it. Um, of the nine millimeters I've seen, and I've only seen two that have been converted to nine millimeter, you had the stainless look on the barrel here back at the ejection port, and you had the, the blued or parkerized finish here on the 762 by 25s. I've seen about half a dozen or eight of these over the years, and these are all this color, so I believe that was standard as issued or as refinished when imported to the, into the U.S. Magazines, kind of a little bit of an unusual magazine release. You've got this, this rear clip right here, it ejects out, and on both of these, even when the magazine's fully loaded, you have to pull it out. To remove the grips, you have a little, uh, little clip right here that pops back and the grips come off. Uh, exposed hammer with a ring, thumb safety, typical reds exposed, it's ready to fire, reds covered up, it's not. Um, that's really all there is to these. It's, it's, it's the difference in the cartridges that we, I wanted to discuss as much as anything. Any of these chambered for 9mm, it's been done after the fact. They're not original. Again, I don't know that it affects the value a tremendous amount, although the originals are usually slightly more desirable. Um, these both actually stand different, different watch duties around here. So I do keep them loaded, although I don't keep any gun that I own chambered. Um, just had it had a weird situation with a Model 1911 many years ago and had an accidental discharge, and I keep nothing chambered. Um, it was I don't believe it was my fault. I believe I had some help on that, but uh, the person involved is no longer with us, so we'll just leave that leave that as alone, but I just don't keep anything chambered. If you choose to, that's great. But, you know, don't comment here on YouTube, you know, that I should or shouldn't because I'm never going to do it again. Um, I just don't keep anything chambered. If I need it that quick, then that's my tough luck. But I just keep everything, just keep revolvers on an empty. It's just not worth the chance of the accidental discharge. You know, with that note, just a short little video on the CZ-52 and their differences. Um, again, I do really, really, really plan on catching up on all these firearms at some point and shooting them so you can see them. Just 
the weather has just screwed with me all winter. Um, on a personal note, my wife and I are in the middle of, of doing some work to uh, sell a home and uh, the weather has us a month behind over there because we haven't been able to do any uh, any finished work on the outside. So it's, it's really been an ugly winter around here. So with that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you have any comments or questions, you know, you can contact or post them here on YouTube, or you can certainly click the uh, contact us button at the mygunvalues.com website. Thanks for watching and have a good day.